Hey, 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 welcome to another episode of Halos in the Infield, the podcast form with your host, Todd Fox, and the other co-host, Fernando Mendez. How's it going? Fernando Mendez in the house, yes. We are starting off this show to let you know where you can find us. That is Spotify, Anchor. It's going to be iHeart soon, iTunes, and Google Play. Uh, we are all on there where your podcast forms and also on YouTube. So if you want to check out the videos, including the good, good interview, good, good interview with Ty Butchery that Fernando hosted the other day, you got to hear some very poignant things from him about his thoughts on minor league baseball and life in general, along with his wife. So that was a really good interview, Fernando. It was, uh, I think when I pitched, I don't know if you got to see the pitch I made on like our, uh, on an IGTV this morning on our page, but uh, like the way I pitched it was like, I kind of knew that it was going to be a, you know, behind the scenes, let's peel back the curtain. But like this guy literally ripped the curtain off, grabbed some oil and lit it on fire. There was like, no, it wasn't fake. It wasn't rehearsed. And actually that's what Todd and I had talked off air. You know, we kind of had this predetermined uh, set of questions we were going to ask. But the more and more the interview progressed, I think Todd and I just kind of both knew, you know what, this is going to be a formal interview, but that's not the kind of people Todd and I are anyway. So I liked it. It flew. It, the flow was great. Um, and They were just really fun people to interview. H him and Sam were just phenomenal people. And I like the fact that, too, Fernando came up with a couple of questions that he had never been asked before and that were very poignant. And uh, he's like, man, I, I wish I had known about these questions. because they, they were kind of uh, – they were on point. And so – that's the kind of interview you got from us. Like he said, he ripped off the curtains. He was able to talk uh, very poignant, and it was a very, very good interview. So I recommend checking that out. But while you're here, too, we want to talk some Angels baseball, of course. And obviously what we're going to do is recap the four-game series with Detroit, and then we're going to look ahead to this big nine-game stretch coming up here with the Giants, Yankees, and the Rays. So where do you want to get started on this Detroit series? What are your thoughts? We got to get started by saying who the show's presented by. Todd, who's presenting the show today? Who's the sponsor? Oh, the sponsor. That would be our new merchandise carrier, which is Red Bubble. Red, Red Bubble. Bubble. That, that's true. Red Bubble is the one that's helping us out here with the shirts and merchandise. So if you want to get some, well, I don't know why you would, but if you want to get some Todd Fox stuff, a shower <laughs> curtain, it's there. But there's shirts. <laughs> There's going to be some Fernando stuff. There's going to be Halos in the infield stuff. So even if you don't want to pull up the stuff that we have, there's an awesome amount of uh, cool shirts uh, representing this this page and the podcast. And also, uh, if you uh, if you watch the post games, you know about the Buttercup and why we play the song. And that's because of the bullpen. So we have Buttercup yep. mm -hmm. stuff. We even have a new shirt coming out called the Blowpen. So Halos Blowpen, yep. Yeah, so assorted candy ass pitchers. Yes, because listen, we're real fans here. We talk up the Angels, so don't get us wrong. But we can also sit there and we're we're uh, we're we can also make fun of the team too when they struggle and stuff. So we're there for the good and we're there for the bad. Absolutely. I mean, trust me, we, we wouldn't be spending our time talking Angels baseball if we didn't like doing it. I mean, it's no secret that when you're starting off a show, you're basically talking to you and the person you're having a conversation with. Mm -hmm. So Todd and I are obviously here because we really like this, as is everyone else on the team. But uh, we're hoping you guys like it as well. The merchandise is something new that we're trying. I mean, you know, if we're going to do it, why wouldn't we do it right? You know, I mean, some people might be thinking to themselves, this is kind of early, but adapt or die. So here we are. I agree. And then right now, this stuff, you know, we, we have, we've done this before on other podcast uh, platforms. And we took off. So I think the same thing is going to happen here. We're doing giveaways on the shows. We've got a lot of uh, upcoming stuff that's going to be really good for the fans, a lot of content. So just stay tuned. Tell a friend. Tell more Angels people about it, uh, it and Angels fans. And this thing will continue to spread like wildfire because every every dime we get, we're putting right back into the show. And we're putting into merchandise for giveaways and things like that, especially at the Big A. If you're lucky enough to be listening to this and you have access to the Big A and watching games, we're going to have uh, giveaways at the stadium. So it's going to be a lot Absolutely. of Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So, Our, um, sorry, Tiger I, Series. Yeah. Sorry, I jumped the gun, man. What are your feelings so uh, about the Detroit series in a nutshell? Uh, I think Rally Chris called it. He's a three out of four. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, hey, I don't know if this guy sold his soul to the devil or what, but I mean, he seems <laughs> to be right most of the time. Mm -hmm. You know, I like that Roger Lodge guy. Oh, Lodge's locks. I'm like, bro, you're wrong. Uh, every time, anytime he says something, it's a, well, I'm going to bet the opposite direction. 
But uh, no, Rally Chris called it, man. Three out of four. It was just a good series. Uh, they had a chance to make it four out of four. They made it, you know, interesting on uh, yesterday, Sunday. But uh, overall, just a good, a good series. You know, the pitching got the job done. Uh, hitters got the job done. Uh, Otani was just a machine. Yeah. You know, I don't, I, I don't even know why. I don't, you know, Albert Pujols sure was a machine, but that nickname was not suitable compared to what we're seeing out of Otani. Otani is just. Not human. I agree because, I mean, if you look at uh, Albert Pujols, you can call him a machine in St. Louis. But that machine never made the trip past the uh, west of the Mississippi, it seemed. Uh, Otani is definitely, if you want to call him the machine, whatever nickname you come up with. Yeah, absolutely. He was phenomenal in that series. And also, like you said, the pitching did, did its job. And the hitting was just like, okay, you need a couple more runs to salt it away? Gotcha. Uh, they just weren't able to take care of that on Sunday. Sunday, they left a few guys on base. Uh, there was four guys in the lineup that went 0 for 4 in key situations. And so 0 for 16 when he had runners in scoring position late in the game, that definitely cost him. Um, there was a few things that kind of be a negative about, but for the most part, like you said, three out of four isn't bad. You would have preferred to sweep. Um, it's just weird that we talk about that series and uh, four games with Detroit, you had three with Kansas City, three with Arizona. So right there, that's 10. And then you had a three-game series with Oakland sandwiched in between. And you figure the Angels went nine and, and four in that, in that stretch. And you think, okay, they must have picked up ground. No, they lost a game and a half because yeah. the, the Oakland A's got that sweep against them. And I think that was super critical. I mean, they took care of the teams they were supposed to. But losing to Oakland, man, I mean, how does that – I mean – We've seen what they did against Detroit. What are your feelings going into these now games that are going to, again, test the Angels? Well, so let's see. So we have the Giants, the mm -hmm. Rays, and the Yankees? Yes. In that order? Um, yeah, it's going to be interesting. I'm hoping they can split against the Giants like they did in San Francisco. The Rays, I mean, if I'm being realistic, I'm hoping for one out of three. Mm-hmm. And then the Yankees, I'm hoping to win the series there. So, I mean, if all that could happen, I would at least consider it, you know, hey, you you, you stayed afloat. Yeah. You know, and that's really all we wanted. I think you and I had both said when Trout went out, the number one thing they could do is stay afloat. Yeah, I think that was that was the thing. I mean, right now they're literally staying afloat. They're 36 and 36. So, actually, it's um, two games – with the Giants sandwiched in between a day off on Thursday, and then you got three in Tampa and then four in New York. Uh, that's crazy. Two days off in one week? Yeah, two days off in one week. So that's what made no sense the other day when we were talking in the post game when they gave up in the day off. It's like, dude, you're going to get a few days. What's going on here? Um, so yeah. um, that's – I think this stretch is really critical because then after that you play Baltimore for three at home and Boston, who is no pushover, who are currently in first place. And then you get Seattle, who you don't know what you're getting with because they're so young. You want to say you can beat them up, but they kind of like, you know, look what they did against Tampa. I mean, they were pathetic before Tampa, and then they swept Tampa. We had a four-game series with Seattle, too, where we split, and that was right before we got hot against the uh, Royals and the Diamondbacks. Exactly. I mean, that's there's some key games here coming up to end June and then also get into July um, before the break, obviously. Uh, we still don't know, and me and you have said it, you know, uh, podcast after podcast or even talking in general night after night, just the fact that we don't know if this team's a buyer or seller. You know, there's still a huge question mark. Changes every day. Every day it changes. Yeah, I mean, what are, you, what are your feelings on that? I mean, like, uh, do you think that's wearing on the team? Because, I mean, if we're feeling it, do you think they feel it? You know, you always hear these guys say, like, oh, like, all I could ever do is, you know, uh, take care of what I'm doing. They can just keep our you know, team, keep their heads down. And I, 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 there's some guys I buy it and some guys I don't. Okay. You know, I mean, if you're a guy like Andrew Heaney right now, you're getting real nervous. Mm -hmm. I mean, assuming you don't want to get traded. And something tells me Heaney probably wants to stay. Mm hmm. Um, but you know, there's, and there, you know, there's some guys like Trout or Tony, those guys aren't going anywhere, but you know, I, I, it's hard for me to imagine that come trade deadline, if you're one of those guys who go either way, you're not getting a little nervous. And the other guys who I'm kind of curious about are guys like Jose Suarez, 
and Patrick Sandoval. Is there any way those guys get traded? I wouldn't do it. Let me make that nice and clear. Mm-hmm. But do you see a situation where either guy could get traded? Uh, I don't think you – at this point, his, he, they will field some calls for Sandoval. There's no doubt. Um, but I don't think the Angels could be in any mindset – to push it past their fans and make it feel like it's a legit move, depending on le- unless they get a mother load back, you know, because I just don't see how you can give up on a guy like Sandoval. He, it looks like he is just coming into his own. And then you mentioned Suarez, dude, every time Suarez is out there and he pitches three innings, I want him to pitch four. And if he pitches four, I want him to pitch five. I don't want to see him leave because he seems to just throw up zeros. And I think yeah. right now his stock, if you have, if you ask me to get a player needed to make a run, I would definitely think Suarez would be dealt. Okay. Now, let me ask you this. So besides the super obvious guys, you know, the Trouts, the Otanis, the Rendones, who on this team right now is on the will not trade list? If you're Perry Manazian, who are you, like, if somebody asks, who are you immediately hanging it up the phone for? And you know what? There's a lot of Angels fans who, you know, like four months ago would have been like, we could never trade Trout. And it seems like almost the mentality's changed. It feels like a lot of Angels fans are all of a sudden like, you know what, maybe we can trade Trout. So who knows? Maybe even he's on, you know, a call you're taking. But uh, your personal opinion, who are you not trading under any circumstance? I still think right now, because Trout's still like, he's barely be 30 next year, right, or at the end of this year. Um, I would say he's off limits. I think uh, Otani's off limits. I think Jared Walsh is off limits. But yeah. even with a contract, if someone were to call about Rendon, as much as I like Rendon, if he were banging to where people were like, man, we really – this team needs needs a third baseman bad, and we're able to eat most of that contract, I would take that phone call. Um, and as good as Upton's playing with a year left, I would take that phone call. Um, I would even take – I agree. I would even take a phone call on Fletcher. Um, I know, I know that would hurt some angel fans, but you know, he, his stock is rising right now. And then you, you can get the right piece, even with a Louis Renifo because of injury, he's looked solid at the, st- at the, uh, major league level. Um, another guy I wouldn't say, I would say no to C-Rod, Detmers, okay. guys like that, but a Packy Naughton maybe if, 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 uh, you know, because we do have a ton of lefties, um, Yeah would be a guy that maybe you retrade. You know, we picked him up from Cincinnati, but if someone wants another arm and he's a guy that can either be a long reliever or slash starter, you know, for the right piece back, why not? Okay. Yeah, I, I don't think any of those were crazy. Um, I still don't like the uh, the idea of moving David Fletcher, and it isn't even because I think, you know, he's, he's, an, he's a god. I, I like him as a player because he's one of those, you know, gritty guys. He's a ball player, and that's what I like about him. You know, we need more ball players. But what I like about Fletcher is it's such a team-friendly contract. Oh, yeah. You know, in two or three years, maybe this is a different conversation. But, I mean, he's batting 280 now. I think, actually, I think he's batting like 290 now. Yeah, he brought it up. He's and- getting on base. Yeah. Uh, obviously, his defense is, you know, up there. You know, he's one of the elite defenders in the league. Mm-hmm. So, it's really hard for me to see us moving him, especially because – I'm starting to lean toward moving him to shortstop next year and then maybe getting a second baseman instead of a shortstop. Because next year, the shortstop market's going to be great, but it's also going to be super expensive. You know, Javi Baez, Trevor Story, uh, Corey Seager, any of those guys Marcus, are going to be yeah. super expensive. Marcus Simeon, any of those guys, Anderson Simmons, mm-hmm. those guys are probably going to go for a lot of money, any of them. I mean, are we really going to bring Simmons back? Probably not. No, no, no. You know, Jose Iglesias, if his defense was better, I would have said, sure, just give him a, you know, $8 million, $10 million a year deal because he doesn't make much right now. He, he do, And how do you feel about him? Because I have my thoughts on him, but do you think he fits this team, Iglesias? It seems like it. I mean, the guys seem to like him. You know, it, it seemed like I, – I, I can't believe I'm ever saying this, but, like, as soon as David Fletcher – sorry, David Fletcher, uh, Dexter Fowler got hurt, who I'm, most people probably forgot he was even on the team for any period of time. Uh, it just seemed like the energy in the locker room just kind of got sucked out. Like if we had Dexter Fowler still healthy, something tells me this team would be doing a lot better. And I'm not saying it's because of Dexter Fowler. I think Dexter Fowler would be about 210. But he just kind of seemed like the, the guy who people were leaning towards. He seemed like he was the morale. 
And uh, it seemed like Iglesias is almost the same thing. You know, he's been there before. He, he's a veteran. People seem to respect him. And the one thing I will say about Iglesias is though his defense hasn't been there, it's never due to a lack of effort. Like, I never see him lazily running out balls. I never see him, you know, making dumb base running decisions. It seems like he's at least trying. And I'll take guys like that on my team any day. I have to agree. Um, he he looks like a different player um, and, and, and someone that the Angels have lacked for a little while. And I will agree with the Fowler thing because whether he's batting 210 or not, number one, he was always on Madden's side wherever he was uh, in Chicago and, and keeping that – he was a team leader over there. Uh, and then um, you think about uh, what he was, what he meant to St. Louis. And if you can be a rock star in St. Louis, then you can be a rock star anywhere. Yeah. And uh, as far as uh, when he played for the Angels, he he wasn't Torrey Hunter level type leader, but you could tell he was a leader. Like we've had this conversation where who's the leader on the Angels? And none of us can really come up with one guy that you can hang your hat on. But like you said, if Fowler was there, dude, I I'm with you 100. percent This team, he would he would be the guy that if Madden's voice wasn't carrying into the locker room and people weren't believing, he would then make you from a player standpoint buy in. You know what I mean? Yep. So that's the thing about Fowler. That that's where I agree with you. That he's he's sorely missed, man. Yeah, but yeah, you know his glove was good, but it, once again, it was just you know it was the bat. Yeah. But, um, you know, that means nothing when, you know, you're relying on someone's energy and leadership. So, and, you know, that might have been good for a guy like Adele. Exactly. You know, he's been there before. And, you know, Anaheim's a tough place to play, you know, especially when the team's not winning. I mean, you and I have said it before that sometimes, you know, uh, you know this fan base is tired of losing. Mm -hmm. You know, we see it all the time on our post game, on your post game show. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not that, you know, people show their love and appreciation and hatred for this team in different ways. I don't, I love when people get opinionated. The only thing I hate is like when there's like ignorance associated with it. Like people make the ignorant comments, and stuff like that. Like that, you know, I, and you know exactly what I'm talking about. There's like people who do it, not even just on this page. Like you go on like the angels, actual Facebook account. I think just always these people who just make these just comments. Where I'm like, did you even read this before you posted it? Yeah. You, you do have these fans that just are entitled to just be like it's raining every day. You know, and yeah. even if the team's winning, it just doesn't seem to to, to make sense to them. And all the time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then it just goes. I'm just like, we won. Shut up. It's just just take it for once. Just we won. Yeah, because that's the thing. Like, even on our <laughs> post game show, or like we've talked about, like there's times where we on message boards too when we're talking, it's the fact that, you know, it the the, the game should dictate how the conversation goes. But to some people, it doesn't matter, man. They're always they're gonna go against the grain no matter what. Um, but but that comes from like a, a lack of uh, or a being. What's the word um, when you're just not optimistic? When you're just apathetic? Pessimistic? Yeah, pessimist. Yeah, yeah. You're just you're just out there as a fan, believing that no matter what kind of move is made, no matter who is signed, like it's just never gonna work out. We're gonna get screwed somehow. We're gonna be the laughing stock, and you take on that mentality. And then it just – it rubs off on other people, unfortunately. So. Yeah. But uh, now we're getting on a tangent, so. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> but, but yeah, I mean, that's – I think that's what happens to the fan base. Fan base has just got to believe in this team. And, you know, coming off the Detroit series, now going into San Francisco, you're facing two pitchers now that are 15 and 3 combined. You know, you got Gossman eight and one, and I believe the other guy's seven and two, uh, Del Sconso or whatever his name is. Uh, Anthony Discofani. There you go. See, I couldn't say that to save my life. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think about those two pitching for, uh, or those two matchups against San Francisco, dude? Because you got Heaney against um, Gossman and the guy that I can't say against Otani. Discofani. Mm hmm. Uh, who, who's he going up against? He's going up against Otani. That's going to be a good game. That's going to be a great game. Um, Di Scalfani, I was a big fan of him in Cincinnati. Uh, my godfather's a big Reds fan, so I got to see him play there. And you know, he just he always had good stuff. It was just you know, it was almost like the Andrew Heaney situation where you know this guy could be very good or he could be very bad. It just kind of depends on the day. But uh, you know, for his sake, I'm glad it's working out for him. Personally, I have nothing against the Giants. I mean, we beat them in 2002, so, you know, thanks for the ring, guys. 
<laughs> but um, <laughs> throw that in there. That's awesome. Yeah, <laughs> I have my ring over there. If you guys want me to grab it and just start flashing it, maybe you should when we do the recap. You should. If there you go, yeah, there you go. If we sweep, I'll bring it out. It's not, it's just yeah. a replica, but I'll bring it out if you sweep. How about that? I'll wear it. There you go. Um, but uh, yeah, no, just Scafani is a good pitcher. He always had the good stuff. So that's going to be a really, really fun matchup, especially if Otani hits. Um, now, as far as the other matchup, uh, Kevin Gossman, I believe he was an Oriole for a decent amount of time. And uh, he almost like a Dylan Bundy type, uh, type of guy. Kind of never really put it together in Baltimore. You had some average seasons, you know, and all of a sudden he just comes here to uh, San Francisco and just, whoa, he's a good pitcher. And that's why a lot of Angels fans are so angry because, you know, he signed a one-year deal with San Francisco. Angels fans are like, why couldn't we do that? Mm-hmm. That's true, and and that was that was a problem because he was he was dangled out on free agency there for a while. So you know the fact that he's there and now it's not one of those situations where we can look at it as Angel fans and say, well, he's two and six right now with a five ERA. So we're glad we didn't get him. No, he's sitting there eight and one, you know, with like a sub three ERA. So uh, one point five one ERA in fourteen games. Yikes. Yeah, talk about a steal right there for the Giants. He's definitely one of the reasons why um, they are in the spot they're at. Now, let me ask you this question. That's a $19 million deal, though. I mean, that's pretty expensive for a one-year deal. I mean, especially for a guy who wasn't, you know, amazing with the Orioles. But, hey, it worked out, so. That is a risk, but now you look at it now, it's like chump change compared to what we've paid on players' <coughs> pools in the last few years, you know what I mean? Like, that's, that's actually saving money. Um, so Gossman Heaney is a 638 start on Tuesday um, evening game. How do you think the Angels fare in that game? Uh, sorry, one more time. I was reading some of these stats from Gossman. You guys have to forgive me there. Oh, no, no worries, dude. I'm just saying uh, Heaney versus Gossman, 638 start on Tuesday evening game, obviously. do you, How do you see the Angels faring in that game? Uh, I've I, I think I said it off there. Actually, no, I, I just said it that uh, I think we're going to split that series. It'll go one and one just like it did in San Francisco. So I think that we slightly lose the uh, the first game. I think Heaney would probably give up. You know, he, he's kind of due for a not-so-good start. Mm -hmm. So I would say he's probably going to give up about four or five runs. Uh, but I do think the bullpen will surprise everyone today or tomorrow. Typically, it's like those games where we're out of it, the bullpen normally keeps us in it. And the games where we have a huge lead, that's where the bullpen blows. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I get you on that one. And then, then, the, then the, obviously, the one to watch is, is Otani. Uh, well, actually, no, I'm, I've got that backwards, actually. I had a uh, backwards on here. It's actually Heaney versus Del Scalfani on Tuesday. And then it's Otani Gossman on Wednesday afternoon, 1 o'clock. So I think you're still going to see an even better matchup. <laughs> yeah, that's a way better matchup. Um, so I'll still say that you're going to get the Giants with a win on Tuesday. How about Wednesday? How do you see that day game matchup at the Big A, Otani Gossman? That's tough because you got two pitchers who are, you know, throwing lights out stuff this year, mm -hmm. but the ball carries in the Big A during the day. Yeah. So I'm going to say the Angels are going to win that game four to two. And it'll be due to some late inning runs. I actually, I think we might actually be down in that game. It'll be typically like the seventh or eighth inning is what I'm guessing. They'll kind of come to life there and they'll end up squeezing out that win. That's just what I'm guessing. I'm hoping so because it's always good if you can end a, um, you know, getaway day with a victory, especially with a day off the next day flying to Tampa. So, uh, yeah, I'm hoping for at least a split in this series. If somehow the Angels can pull out two which actually I got contacted by a couple Dodger fans saying good luck against the Giants, which was weird. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but uh, but the fact that they know that this is an important series, they want to gain some gain uh, ground on uh, the Giants, just shows you uh, we need this one too. So uh, we'll see, man. Um, and then obviously Tampa and New York after that, you know, I'm, I'm just hoping like it's day by day, bro. And, and like, like, like you said earlier, some days it looks like we're going to be buyers. Some days it looks like we're going to be sellers. 
Yeah, I don't think uh, Pyre is going to make any moves per se that are going to just directly help this year. I don't think we're going to go out there and get rentals, mm -hmm. but I could definitely see some situations where we go out there and make some moves that will help this year and next year and kind of see where we are. You know, like our Yerman Marquez or, you know, somebody like that who will be around Luis Castillo, one of those kind of guys. I, I could see us maybe overpaying a little bit to be able to get the help this year and next year. I agree. It's all about the club control because really – there's not much club control on this team up and down the roster. I mean, this you said it before, I've said it before, this team next year is going to have a way different look. <laughs> it's going to be yeah. totally re redid with all, only a couple pillars still being in place. And that's either really exciting or is going to just be an absolute shit show. <laughs> <Yes>. so, <laughs> so it's going to be – there's going to be no in-between. I mean, come on, we – well, we're Angels fans. We get buttercuffed, right? Oh, yeah. So there's no in-between. You know, Perry's going to go balls in, and it's going to just be great, or it's going to be a absolute belly flop off the Empire State Building. It's going to be one or the other. It's going to be last place, or next year, sports other fans going to be right, we're going to make the World Series. Yeah, or, or at least most oh. approved baseball team, and, you know. That's why yeah. – I'm hoping for that, but hey, if we make if we actually uh, break the Sports Illustrated jinx and we're in the World Series, I'll take that any day, bro. Just like you would. I mean, did they call the World Series in 2017? Granted, there was cheating involved. They did, though. But, they did. Um, I'm pretty sure they did call it, and then I think they like predicted that the Reds were going to win. Either like I, I think it might have been this year they predicted, and I was like, oh no. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, some some but, they make some pretty wacky decisions, or or like uh, what uh, they usually do is they'll always pick the Yankees one year, or they'll pick the Dodgers. So it's like, oh come, what a stretch, you know, like whatever. Yeah, I'm like, well, I know my six year old was an editor over there. Exactly, I think he <laughs> he can make a better uh, prediction. So any any other thoughts on the the uh, week that was the Angels going back to uh, last uh, Wednesday, I believe, or uh, Thursday with Detroit. No, like I told you, I mean, I've said it many times lately that we've been playing so much better baseball. Mm -hmm. You know, it's been competitive, and even though the games they've lost, they've at least still been in it. They've made it close. They've made it interesting. Mm -hmm. That's all you got to do, man. You know, you can't even pay attention to the win-losses sometimes. As long as you're having good games, you're taking the momentum out of them, that's all that matters. Yeah. Dot your eyes and cross your T's. As long as you're doing all that, wins and losses really don't count. Just keep the momentum going, keep the team positive, and eventually the wins will come. You just can't, you know, you can't overthink it. You know, you're playing baseball at the end of the day. And, you know, just, it's been a much different improvement over the last three weeks. We've had much different conversations. You know, minus that Oakland series, it's been pretty good for the last month. I agree. Um, you know, just to follow up on that, in the early June, late May, I mean, it was pretty tough to talk Angels baseball on a nightly basis. I mean, yeah. we were getting buttercupped on the routine. <laughs> and, uh, and you had that, that song just waiting constantly. Yeah, yeah, I had it queued up, man. And I even used different versions of it because I got tired of playing the same one. So, uh, yeah, it was a definitely difficult uh, month of uh, most of May and then in, and in the first part of June. So, like you said, we've been playing better ball. Uh, just got to keep the momentum going. Kind of just, it's hard as Angel fans not to look at the standings, but I think it's probably positive not to and hopefully yeah. these teams start falling back because even as we've seen today just outside of our or in our division uh houston has won its seven straight so now they got into first place since oakland lost today to texas so we actually didn't gain anything we're still sitting at seven and a half out uh so um yeah it is what it is it's i thought we were seven we're seven and a half so uh yeah it's just better to just keep playing keep winning what keep Control of what's in front of you, and that's about all they can do. Yeah, yeah, couldn't agree with you more. So anything else about the merchandise you want to bring up before we get out of here or talk about uh, what's going on with the page, interviews, things like that? Uh, so once again, as Todd said, uh, check out that Ty Butchery interview. That was a uh, good time. Uh, it will not disappoint. I absolutely promise. Uh, make sure to check out the merch. Uh, we're going to be constantly trying to throw some stuff out there as we see fit. We have a really talented guy named Randy who's uh, helping us out with that. Uh, make sure to check out his Instagram page. What is it, Fast Times Under the Halo? Yeah, he's got that one or Blue-Eyed Irish. 
Okay, yeah, make sure to check him out there. He posts uh, constantly, and, you know, he's a friend of the show for sure. Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah, yeah, continue to check him out. Uh, go ahead and follow us on all of our social medias, Halos in the Infield. Keep participating in the uh, question of the day. Uh, our promotion guys have been doing a good job posting that, like, around all areas of social media. I just found out we were po- he was posting them on like certain Facebook groups, and you know we're getting hundreds of responses over there. I'm just like, whoa, okay. Yeah, yeah, it's blowing up right there. That's a good. It's a good little segment for sure. So yeah, yeah, we have to think about what to what to do for tomorrow because it was an off day. So you know, it's like, oh, I can't even like play off of the, the game. When you could but, you could play off the off day. You could be like, what does a normal Angel fan do on the off day? You know what what's yeah. What, how do you, how do you uh, fill your sports need or your angels uh, need? Yeah, really, because I mean, there's only basketball right now, right? Oh, and hockey. Yeah, there's basketball and hockey. But most baseball fans, if they're hardcore, they're not really into what's going on right now in basketball and hockey, especially with the local teams. Well, actually, I mean, I wouldn't count the Clippers as a local team. Not too many. Yeah. They don't have too many Clipper fans, but the Lakers being out of it, I think, brings more attention to baseball. I think. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's fair. I mean, I've always just kind of been a baseball guy. I mean, I, I think my my hockey team is the Arizona Coyotes. They're not making the playoffs ever. They yeah. did last year, and I was like, oh, my gosh. <laughs> so I always joke um, with my uh, uh, girlfriend's dad or my fiance's dad that uh, we're just a family who likes losers. So, <laughs> <laughs> Well, hopefully that changes, man. Hopefully, hopefully. <laughs> Yeah, hopefully at least the Angels can win. That's really all I care about. If I can get that, everything else is better. Exactly. So that's the way. There's only one way to go, but up right now. So with that being said, that'll uh, bring it into our podcast for today. And then look ahead uh, for the rest of the week. We'll have a show on uh, later on this week. Uh, Me and Fernando will uh, talk about the week that was Angels baseball again. And we'll talk about uh, what they did in the specific games, have more stats. And uh, we'll probably do more time next week, too, because we'll be on uh, Skype this time. We're doing it uh, via uh, Zoom right now. They give you kind of a time limit. So. Uh, with that being said, for Todd Fox, uh, this was the- and Fernando. And oh. Fernando. <laughs> <laughs> this has been Halos in the Infield. Good night, everyone. <laughs>